Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, the icy stare doesn't work. <laughs> All right, uh, good morning. Um, a bit earlier this morning, the Secretary General spoke to about 120 UN resident coordinators during their annual meeting this week here at UN headquarters. He thanked them for their work and commitment to the reforms of the UN development system and acknowledged that much, remains, much more remains to be done. He stressed that we cannot chart the road to peace and prosperity without putting development strategies front and center. And he called on the resident coordinators to make full use of their newly empowered role by leading by example, building partnerships with governments, and making the most of the 2030 agenda by leveraging all its components, including the Paris Agreement. He added that reform is about results and emphasized the crucial role of the resident coordinator in bringing these to life. The Deputy Secretary General also addressed the resident coordinators this morning. The objective of this annual meeting is to start uh, readying the UN's chiefs on the ground for the decade of action to achieve the sustainable development goals and assess the progress and challenges of the UN development reform. Um, speaking at the conference uh, on the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction, the Secretary General reminded participants that the world already enjoys five such zones in Latin America and the Caribbean, in Africa, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and the South Pacific. These nuclear weapons free zones, he added, put a permanent end on the possibility of nuclear conflict in a given region. The Secretary General said the Middle East zone will need to be the product of the specific circumstances of the region and strengthening the security of all states. He told the participants that we should all take inspiration from the first successful proposals of a denuclearized zone tabled just a few weeks after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Despite tensions and politics of the Cold War, Latin American and Caribbean countries managed to establish a flexible and durable arrangement which has served as a model for other zones. And the Security Council this morning held an open meeting on the situation in Libya, briefing the council members via video link. The Secretary General Special Representative, Ghassan Salame, said that more than seven months into the conflict and given the dangerous escalation in fighting in and around Tripoli, we are, never more, we are ever more in a race against time to reach a peaceful solution that would spare many lives. Mr. Salame said he was angry and sad that in what may be a war, of war crime, a biscuit factory in Tripoli was hit today in an airstrike with at least 10 people dead and dozens more injured. He stressed that his determination to see an end to the debilitating conflict as preparations are underway for the next step of the initiative announced in July of this year. His full remarks are online. And I have a humanitarian update from our colleagues in Haiti. Most businesses and schools in the country have been closed since mid-September due to ongoing protest and unrest. This, as you can imagine, has a negative impact on the economic and social life in Port-au-Prince and other urban centers. Food insecurity is on the rise. According to the latest um, integrated phase classification report, 3.7 million people are currently experiencing crisis and emergency levels of food insecurity. This includes 1 million people out of a total population of 11 million facing emergency levels of food insecurity. Assessments indicate that food insecurity could affect more than 4 million people by March of next year. To facilitate access to people in need, WFP is working to establish a humanitarian air service using a million dollar allocation from the central, UN Central Emergency Relief Fund rapid response. Humanitarian needs continue to rise in Haiti and new support is encouraged. Lack of funding has impacted the capacity of humanitarian organizations to deliver assistance to the most vulnerable. The humanitarian response plan for Haiti, which is valued at $126 million, is only funded at 29% this far. And according to a new report released by uh, UNICEF today, there's been a historic gains all over the world uh, for the all, excuse me, there have been historic gains overall for the world's children since the Convention on the Rights of the Child was adopted 30 years ago. However, many of the poorest children have yet to feel the impact, the agency says. Citing progress in child rights over the past three decades, the report uh, notes that global under five mortality rate has fallen by about 60%, and the proportion of primary school-aged children not in school decreased from 18 to 8%. 
However, the report notes that this progress has not been in even in lower mi middle income countries. Children from the poorest households are twice as likely to die <coughs> from preventable causes before their fifth birthday than children in the richest households. The full report is online. Um, and WHO and the African Union to, earlier today signed a historic memorandum of understanding cementing mutual commitment to expand and deepen the relationship and cooperation between the two organizations. This significant commitment to global health follows the political declaration on universal health coverage approved by 193 member states during the GA and the adoption of a global resolution to translate that political commitment into realities in 140 countries shortly after. Uh, just want to, uh, sorry, want to flag a senior appointment. <coughs> uh, the Secretary General is appointing today Kani uh, Wingnaraja of Sri Lanka as the next Assistant Secretary General and Director for Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific in the UN, pro in the UN Development Program. Um, she succeeds Hao Yong Shu of the People's Republic of China, who has recently been appointed to head UNDP's Bureau for Policy and Program. Uh, Connie recently served as the Acting Assistant uh, Administrator and Director for the Bureau for Management Services at UNDP and a Special Advisor to UNDP. Um, we congratulate her on this well-deserved appointment. And tomorrow, I want to flag an event that will take place. Um, sorry, I want to flag today an event that will take place tomorrow. Let's try that again. Um, the UN Interagency Working Group on Disarmament, Demobilization, and Reintegration, better known as DDR, is, to set, uh, is set to launch its revised guidance during the high-level event schedule at 10 a.m. in the ECOSOC chamber. The event called Journey for Peace, Peace and Development will gather principles on the working uh, groups in D, uh, on DDR, which is made up of 25 UN entities as well as member states and the group of friends of DDR. The high-level segment will be simultaneously in New York and in Geneva and will be webcast on UN Web TV and the UN YouTube channel. Um, and after you are done with me, uh, our colleague Rima Baza will brief on behalf of the President of the General Assembly. And we are up to 136 member states who have paid their budget dues in full. And we thank our friends in Mali for having done so. Bitul. Thank you, Stefan. Does the UN have uh, any knowledge of who is responsible for the airstrike in Libya, which killed 10 people today? No, nothing. we have nothing more than uh, what Mr. Salame said. Yes, sir. Um, I, I do wonder whether Mali gets the escalator switched on or not. <laughs> but anyway, my you, question... You may be surprised as to who gets <laughs> this escalator switched on. Um, my questions uh, are about China. I've got two questions for you. Um, so we've seen an intensification of uh, the violence in Hong Kong. Uh, as he walked past the stakeout, the Secretary General told me, we ask for demonstrators not to be violent and for security forces to show restraint, which has been your consistent position. But I'm wondering how he's trying to articulate that position to the, to the parties involved. What contacts has he had particularly with representatives of China in recent weeks? Uh, the Secretary, I, it's, I'm not aware of the Secretary General having discussed the situation in Hong Kong with a senior <coughs> Chinese official uh, recently. Contacts are had at various levels on, on, as a matter of, uh, of routine, but that is the Secretary General's position. And another China question. You'll have seen over the weekend the New York Times uh, obtain documents showing the level of repression in Xinjiang. Um, I want to know what the UN's reaction to that story is. And what is the Secretary General's clear position on those camps where okay. there are more than a million people, we thought, being held? Does the Secretary General believe they should be closed? Uh, the Secretary, I mean, we have no particular comment on, on the New York Times article. We don't comment on, on leaked documents, whether they're from the UN or from uh, or maybe from other, other places. Um, the Secretary General has been very consistent, both publicly uh, and privately, on his on on China on the issue of the situation in Xinjiang. He uh, raised it, in fact, uh, not too long ago with the with the um, the Prime Minister of China during his meeting in uh, in ASEAN. Uh, 
first of all, the Secretary General hopes very much uh, that uh, the, there will be a positive outcome to the ongoing dialogue between the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the People's Republic of China for a range for a trip uh, to China uh, by, the, uh, by the High Commissioner for, for Human Rights. Um, his position uh, on the situation is that there needs to be full respect for the unity and territorial integrity of China, condemnation of terrorist attacks, as no uh, cause on grievances can justify them, and human rights must be fully respected in the fight against terrorism and the prevention of violent extremism. Each community must feel that its identity is respected and fully belongs to the nation as a whole. You did not answer my specific question. Does the Secretary General believe those camps should be closed? I think what the Secretary General believes is that a, a visit uh, by the High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, would be a very positive Can you give one. me a yes or no answer to That's the question? That's what I will tell you. Mario. Okay. Evelyn, please. On Thank you. Bolivia, do you have any update of uh, the war on the work of uh, Mr. Arno in the country? Yes, uh, Mr. Arno continues uh, his work in uh, in in Bolivia. My understanding is that he will uh, participate in a, uh, a meeting uh, organized by the Episcopal Conference of a dialogue with different sectors of Bolivian uh, society. Madam, and then Ali. Thank you. Uh, today, the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights presented a report on the um, UN Global Study on Children Deprived of Liberty, and they claim that uh, more than 100,000 children are detained because of immigration in the United States. Um, does uh, the Secretary General have any concerns about these high numbers of children detained in the United States under migration rules? And they also are giving high numbers uh, to Mexico, which is now one of the countries I mean, working uh, with We have the nothing US. to add to what our human rights colleagues have said. The Secretary General has always spoken out uh, against the detention of children, wherever that may occur. Ali. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, I wonder whether you have any comment on the uh, what's happening on, in Iran, uh, especially that the, uh, the authorities are just uh, on their crackdown on the protesters. There are casualties and uh, some people are injured. Also, the authorities in Lebanon and in other countries, they're saying that blocking streets and uh, public venues is contrary to international laws or customs. Is that true? Look, on, uh, on Iran, uh, Secretary General is following with concern uh, the ongoing situation in the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, especially the clashes between protesters and security forces that we saw over the weekend. He's very much saddened by the loss of life that we've seen. Um, and I would refer you to what we said already uh, earlier this uh, fall in October regarding street demonstrations and calls on all to avoid violence and the importance also for safeguarding civic space. Um, on the issue of, of roads, I mean, I, you mentioned to me the, the comments made by uh, Lebanese um, um, senior army officials. I haven't, you know, I, have, I haven't seen those direct comments. There is a body of work uh, within the, the human rights uh, that deals with the balance that need to be struck between um, allowing people to demonstrate uh, freely, but also respecting the rights of others, including people who want to get on with their with their lives. So I would refer you to to that. As a matter of principle, we believe that people have a right. Uh, to demonstrate uh, freely. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Um, thank you. Uh, a Palestinian journalist, uh, his name is Muad Amarna, was shot in the eye when he was covering a uh, demonstration in the village of Sorif next to Hebron. Are you aware of that? Anybody had uh, took note of this uh, attack on a journalist? I, I've seen the, the press reports, I think, uh, any time a journalist gets injured while doing their job, uh, the authorities need to investigate it uh, very thoroughly. Uh, another question. There is a, a statement issued by UNICEF um, regarding killing children in schools. She, uh, the statement mentioned two students killed in East Russia and two students killed in California. But there is a Palestinian student who was in uh, Onorwa school 
His name is Amir Ayad. He is second grade. He was killed during this uh, latest Israeli attack. So UNICEF failed to see also a Palestinian killed in his school and in second grade and in a UN. Uh, why is that? And I ask UNICEF. They didn't reply, so I'm asking you well, I would, I would so you can address it to UNICEF. I will pass on your, your request to, to UNICEF. Yeah. Stefano and then James. Thank you, Stefano. Is a follow-up on Libya about the um, bombing uh, that <coughs> caused at uh, least 10 civilian death. Does the Secretary General think uh, that Apart to who did it, that he's uh, is uh, amount to a war crime. This, this. Well, I think uh, Mr. Salame said it, this may amount to a war crime. We don't know uh, what exactly happened yet, uh, but obviously, the, if it if if it turns out to be, uh, you know, the. I think the investigation needs to be done to look exactly what happened. I, Mr. Salame speaks on behalf of the Secretary General on what happens in Libya. James and then Fatih. Jeffrey Epstein. Prince Andrew, in his television interview, said that at the townhouse parties he met a variety of people, including people from the United Nations. Are you aware of any senior officials from the UN meeting Mr Epstein? Is, are there any uh, inquiries going on here at UN headquarters to find out who did meet I him? I have absolutely uh, no knowledge of anyone, uh, any UN official uh, meeting Mr Epstein in that townhouse. Okay, uh, since we have a fiesta of the Middle East uh, issues, any update on Yemen and the uh, negotiations taking place? No, uh, in, uh, we may have Oman. some travel to announce for Mr. Uh, Griffiths, uh, who I believe may be heading to Saudi Arabia soon, but otherwise nothing, nothing else. All right. Tfaddali. No, am I, am I saying it right? Good afternoon, everyone.